Ah, look at this, another system exploration video. It's been a while since you saw one of these. Although, most of them were recorded back around the same time, October to November of 2018. I've just been rather lazy about editing them, voice tracking them, and what have you. But they're back, and what we got here for you today is a relatively new system. Of course, new is somewhat of a loose term here. The system came out of one of the labs and was previously hooked up to a scanning electron microscope, as you might be able to tell from the front. Of course, that scanning electron microscope has long since been disposed of. There's an oddity you won't see anymore. Three external facing, three and a half inch drive bays. Once we look inside, we can see just how dirty this thing really is. Yuck. This dust is everywhere, including in the power supply, which we'll find out later actually poses a problem. Here we can see the CPU in its slotted package. The slotted package, of course, existed from the, I believe, the Pentium Pro, if not certainly the Pentium 2, through the Pentium 3 before they came out with the PGA 370. Can't really tell which one this is just by looking at it, but I will tell you that this is a Pentium 3 CPU. And you can see the motherboard model. Unfortunately, yes, this is an Asus motherboard. Here we can see all of the expansion cards. The top card was, of course, the video card, but the bottom card is actually the interface card for the old scanning electron microscope. Looks kind of like a SCSI board if you look at the connector on the back, which we will do here in just a few seconds. In a departure from all the rest of the machines, we can see that this one makes use of an award BIOS. Check that out. Ribbon cable on the back. That is a SCSI ribbon cable. This motherboard has onboard, I believe they call that parallel 80 pin SCSI, but I'm not positive. It might only be 50 pins, to be honest with you. I've never actually counted, but. It's there, definitely an interesting thing to have on what is otherwise a fairly standard PC motherboard. Of course, the hard drive is just a boring IDE type, which actually comes as a bit of a surprise and also of benefit because it makes it a lot easier to replace it if it would ever go bad. Worth noting is the fact that although this is a more modern ATX power supply, it still has the inverse IEC power connection on the back. I believe this power supply is actually dual mode and that you could also use it as an AT power supply if you so desired. It had the connections on it for that. And as you can see, this thing has an onboard SCSI port. This is the only thing that is on the SCSI bus at present. Based on these labels here, it looked like this system originally had a PCI or maybe even an ISA video card, but that at some point down the line it was replaced with the AGP card that is installed now. I forgot to mention it, but uh, please do excuse all of the background noise. I was in the middle of a data transfer using another system while recording this. But here we are about to power the machine on. I've hooked up a keyboard to it, 
just the PS2 keyboard. This one uses PS2 as opposed to the old AT 5-pin DIN connection. Oh, it's growling at me. You may have noticed the flashing power LED. That is a sure sign that the power supply is no good. Here I've grabbed a random ATX power supply that was sitting in a stack, and I'm going to use this to test and see if the system board has survived the obvious power supply failure. Well, it's still got a problem, but that is definitely promising. You get a beep code out of it now. And the beep code in question on an award BIOS indicates that the memory is bad or that it's in an inappropriate configuration. I went ahead and changed the memory configuration to something that should hopefully be a little bit more valid. Here we can see that our CMOS battery is most assuredly dead. Just for grits and shins, I've gone ahead and plugged in the original power supply just to show you what the system does when I do so. Look at all that disgusting black dust. It's very fine, and it sticks to everything. I think it's time we all get together and say, "Ew." You'll note the very curious 220 volts only, although the power supply is actually wired for 120 volts. I'm not entirely sure where that sticker applies and what its meaning really is. Not that it really matters, because the power supply is completely dead anyway. Here's the power supply I installed to replace it. Probably not the best power supply in the world. I've never heard of that brand before, and it may or may not actually be reputable. It did at least seem to be built fairly well, so I guess there's one thing, but... It was what I installed, and it does seem to work, so good enough for me.
Here's a blast from the past. Remember when you could customize the Windows loading screen very easily? I think there are still tools that will allow you to do it today. Although maybe not for any of the new UEFI things. I know for Windows XP, there certainly was. And I think there might have also been for Windows Vista and Windows 7. But I don't know about later releases. Somebody might, in the comments, be able to tell me whether that is the case. I don't have much experience with those. And most of my boot splash customization was done with Windows 95 and 98 anyway. Looks like they even install an OEM info file. So this is the original install of Windows that uh, was made when the scanning electron microscope would have been brand new from the factory. Here we're going to have a look at what kind of use the hard drive has had. Not very much when you consider it's a 20 gig drive, but I think the more interesting thing here is that the system actually does support the full capacity on 48-bit LBA drives. Or, in other words, it actually supports 48-bit LBA. And that is pretty much going to conclude our system exploration. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off, and I hope to see you next time. Till then.